lot of people don't realize how squished it is inside the, yeah. the Soyuz. And then when you cock those seats, yep. it's really tight. What was it like? Describe for people that haven't really sure, seen it before, sure. how the logistics of opening the hatch and getting a person right. out and other people out. So when we say cocking the seats, the seats actually put, push up. And it, so it provides, it's essentially kind of a piston situation so that when we land, there's the seats can kind of displace downward to absorb some of that shock. And, and we get to experience that in the fit check prior to launch. So we actually get all strapped into the seat and they cock the seats up. And so you get to kind of feel what that, what it feels like to be in that constrained position. And the Soyuz is pretty tight as it is. I mean, I, I guess I like to compare it to fitting three people into the front of a Volkswagen Beetle. And actually it's tighter than that, I think. And then when you cock the seats, you kind of I mean, it's really kind of being pushed up into the dashboard and, and it's a pretty tight fit. And when we did that for the fit check before launch, they didn't cock the commander seat up. So it was still pretty easy to get out. You could slide over and there's more room there. For descent, when we actually went through the, the real situation, you've been sitting in that seat now for probably three hours strapped in. You've just gone through high Gs where you, you really get sucked down into the seat. And so you're trying to tighten your straps so that you're ready for, for landing and, and uh, parachute opening and landing. And when the seat cocks up, it happens much quicker than it happens on the ground. I think on the ground, they use some kind of a pneumatic system that kind of slowly pushes you up. And when it really happens, it's pretty brisk so that if you're not paying attention, all of a sudden the dashboard is in your face. It's a pretty tight fit because you, you know, there's instruments, there's a hand controller, you know, I was sitting on the right seat and there's a hand controller over here. So when, when you get pushed up, I mean, that really kind of comes up against your knees and squeezes your knees, knees together and your face is, you know, the, the panel is right here. So you are, not going anywhere in that situation and so after landing you're still sitting in that position and so it's nice to finally get out of the seat so I waited for Oleg and, and Kimia to get out and like I said we were hanging kind of face down and the hatch opens kind of like this so uh, when they release you out of your seat belt you kind of just kind of fall down they control you know control you and let, let you down easy and it's funny because my brain was telling me oh this is this is actually not gonna be too bad I'll just get on all fours on the hatch and just kind of crawl out. <laughs> sure you will. And uh, my brain and and like my body just had like this immediate dissociation because as soon as I got let down on the hatch, I just kind of went flunk. <laughs> I couldn't even lift my head up. I was just like, yeah. oh. Six <laughs> months, man. Never... <laughs> Six months in microgravity. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so thankfully there are there were people, people there, there that know what's, what's going on and know what I'm, so I didn't totally place, face plant and break my nose on the hatch. <laughs> And they pulled me out and you know a after even minutes to an hour your body starts to go through this adaptation process and recognizes gravity again and your muscles you know don't want to work but you know even after an hour you're able to stand up and walk with with some support and you know it's amazing just within days you're walking unassisted and then within weeks you're really i think almost back to normal mm -hmm.